welcome to Tuesday, the 19th of June. This is your Business Morning with me, Bolson. I'm you. We're live to you from Lagos, Nigeria's financial and economic epicenter. Nigeria is starting its own trade war, this time on rice. The country's agri minister, Aldo Ogwe, says the country's West African land borders will be shut this week to prevent indiscriminate dumping of foreign rice into the Nigerian market. According to Aldo Ogwe, who spoke on Monday, he says, quote, smuggling is our problem. As we speak, a neighbor of ours is importing more rice than China is importing. They do not eat parboiled rice. They eat white rice. They use their ports to try and damage our economy. The Agri and Rural Development Minister went on to say that I am telling you, I'm telling this audience now, because in a few days you will hear the border has been shut. We're going to shut it to protect you, us, and protect our economy. Aldo, we added that there are three kinds of water in their natural state. There is fresh water from the river, salt water from the sea, and blackish water. He says, if you go to the Delta in many countries in Southeast Asia where they grow the rice, if you plant rice in the same place like four to six years continuously, the quantum of arsenic begins, begins to increase and arsenic causes cancer. And that is what they are dumping their rice for us. The uh, Agri Minister says some people say they prefer Thailand rice because they are very sophisticated. Welcome to poison. So the Agri Minister is advising Nigeria to uh, patronize the country's rice. What, where are we at the moment? Nigeria's uh, import of rice has declined about 95% uh, over the last two years as we see local rice farming increasing their output to about uh, 30 million metric tons. So that's a major discussion we're having today. But what else is making the headlines this morning as we start our own first business and markets week here after the long Ramadan holiday? President Buhari's signing of the 9.16 trillion appropriations has been shifted to Wednesday the 28th to kickstart the New Year's fiscal spending. The breakdown briefings from the Ministers of Finance and Budgets and National Planning uh, will be between Thursday and Friday. So it's going to be a busy week on that front. Meantime, if you're looking at how the markets are shaping up today, there's a rattling of the OPEC meeting on Friday. U.S. President Trump is slamming OPEC on Twitter. Now the U.S. lawmakers are pushing to bust OPEC with what they call no OPEC. That is, that's the acronym for No Oil producing and exporting cartels act that's a new law that the u.s want to pass that would tame opec and prevent any country to gang up and decide supply and pricing of crude oil anywhere in the world and that's the latest war from washington Meantime, OPEC and Russia, uh, all ministers are heading to a fractious meeting on Friday in Vienna to discuss their forward production uh, increase. This morning, where are we as far as oil price concerned? WTI down 1.02%. The Brent benchmark is about 1% in the red, and natural gas also about 1% in negative territory. And the U.S. trade China, uh, uh, trade threats is denting the Asian stock market. It looks like a very negative uh, Tuesday. Uh, we're looking at the opening uh, on, on the European markets uh, today. Latest FOMC hike, President Muhari's budget, OPEC meeting, and prices. All of that will be what you'll hear about on the program today as we squeeze both local and global headlines together to make a sense of where we are with the looming global trade war. But Nigeria now starting its own war with its own neighbor. And that has to do with a staple called rice. Uh, let's welcome the Director General of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Muda Yusuf, to the studio to uh, take off this rice war uh, for us. Good morning. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's, it's, it's an interesting war. <laughs> this is a war Nigeria has fought for many years, and it seems there is no end to it. So this is another dimension to it, shorting the land borders. This is what Aldrowe has been credited as saying. How does this uh, 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 go with you as someone who sits in the Chamber of Commerce? Well, uh, first of all, let me say that I appreciate the frustrations uh, of the minister uh, concerning the issue of rice. Uh, the government has done quite a lot uh, to improve uh, local production of rice to ensure that uh, at least we're able to feed ourselves. The president has said that several times. Uh, but my view is that we have to be more strategic when we are dealing with economic issues. Uh, this is a very simplistic way of dealing with the challenge of smuggling. 
Uh, smuggling is essentially a symptom of a problem. And when you begin to fight a symptom, you cannot solve the problem. You need to identify the cause of the problem. First, there is a major issue with productivity in agricultural sector, generally. If you have a country of this kind of population, and you have a sector which is agri-sector that has very serious productivity challenges, you are likely to have this kind of problem. Uh, of course, there has been some efforts to support agriculture, to support the production of rice. But we are still very far from what the demand is. There's a demand gap of close to 2.5 to 3 million metric tons of rice locally. And the way to, to tackle this problem is to see what you can do to scale up productivity so that we can narrow the demand, the demand supply gap between the domestic production and the demand. That is one. There is also the dimension of policy. Because sometimes you solve a problem not so much by physically going to block the road or block the borders, but through policy. When you have a situation where you have a huge differential in price between your country and your neighboring country, you have created a big incentive for smuggling. And you are dealing with a country first where you <clears throat> have very weak institutions. No matter what we say, no matter how good your policy is, if your institutions are weak, you are not likely to get the right kind of outcome. Secondly, we are dealing with a situation where we have about 1,400 illegal routes across the border to the country, which is almost impossible to man. 